Shalom. Uh, I'm going to call this gold and silver will not save you in the, in the judgment of Yahuwah. It will not save you. The gold and silver, um, I got a scripture for that. It's in Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 7 talks about the final desolation of Israel and the repentance from them to escape. But if you read the whole thing, that's talking about the 16th verse of the morning, full repentance from, uh, of them that escape. But then they try to use gold and silver as money, like these bankers try to do and uh, people that run in power. Gold and silver wasn't saved because our forefathers said gold, like everybody's trying to tell you to buy gold, buy gold and silver. It's not going to save you. I'm going to read uh, Ezekiel 7 and 19. Like I got in my notes. And it says, They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall remove their silver, and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of Yahuwah. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowls, because, it's, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. That means sin, iniquity. Um, a lot of people think gold and silver is the, the way to buy out and say you can't buy your judgment out of the way of uh, the Most High Yah, Yahuwah. You can't buy your judgment out of the, the Most High because he will destroy you. He will slay you wherever he wants to do. It's in the book and I did not write this. Okay, It's in ancient scripts, manuscripts and the stone and papyrus as well. Because you got people debating by history and don't have no clue. This is confirmed. Do some research. Because people that don't do diligent research and don't even believe in the research, that's your opinion. I'm not going to debate with you and gainsay. Because you got many people out there uh, teaching idolatry. You know? So I'm going to Proverbs uh, chapter 11. It's a precept to the seventh chapter of Ezekiel uh, 7 and 19. A lot of people don't talk about gold and silver as a sin in these groups. And, they and they're the biggest hypocrites that don't teach this. Uh, gold and silver is very important to teach that it is a sin. You can't buy your way out of money. You can't survive it. It won't save you. Now, some of them teach it, but not all of them. You know. You got some to say get money you can. That's GOCC. They're the main reason. They teach the money part of it. I don't teach that. It's prosperity doctrine. And you got a lot of these false prophets out there teaching get money you can. That's not going to save you. It's not going to save you in the end time. It's not going to save you. Gold and silver. That's a sin. And it says in the fourth verse, and it says, Riches profit not in the day of the wrath, but the righteous delivered from death. But it says, but righteousness delivered from death. That's what it says if you're righteous. But if riches uh, profit not in the day of wrath. That's right. And that's a precept to Ezekiel. And like it says, uh, a lot of people say they shall cast seven gold and then, you know, deliver in the day of wrath. But it says, shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of Yahuwah. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowls, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. Their sins, our forefathers were sinning. Because it was a stumbling block in their iniquity. And then you can read in Proverbs uh, uh, 11 and 4. And it says, Riches profit not in the day of the um, day of the wrath. But in righteousness delivered from the death. So yeah, you know. It ain't going to save you. But if you read 10 and 2. I think that's another precept to it. Uh, 10 and 2. And I'm going to get Zephaniah in a minute. Or 1 and 18 and 3. And something chapter 3. I don't have that in my notes. I'm just going to precept the precept. So I'm going to. I went Ezekiel. And I went into Proverbs. I went precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little there a little. Isaiah 28 and 10. And, and always make sure you read 28 and 13. And don't get caught up and snare and fall backward. So I'm going to read the second verse. It says, Treasures of the wickedness profit nothing but righteousness delivered from death. I'm going to read that again. It says, and it's the first verse, and it says, The treasures of the wickedness profit profit nothing. That's talking about gold and silver again, like we just read in uh, Proverbs, 11, 4, uh, Proverbs 11 and 4, and 
Ezekiel 7 and 19. But these, this is in the book, same book of Proverbs. It's just two chapters. So what I did was went to chapter 11 first. See, I read Ezekiel a couple minutes ago. And then I went to uh, uh, chapter 10. Like it says right here, it's a precept to, to 11 and 4. And also, if I'm not mistaken, it lines up with Ezekiel, what it's saying in gold. What Solomon is saying. You know, it lines up with Solomon's writing. So it's like a, you know, a map. And it says, treasures of the wickedness profit nothing. That's how I'm going to go and sell. But it says, but the righteousness delivered from death. If you're righteous and humble yourself, it delivers you from death. And yeah, you know, that's, you know, that's the main ones I want to get. I'm going to get Zephaniah uh, 1 and 18. Let's see, it's a guardian. Zephaniah 1 and It says the 18 verses of precept to Ezekiel 7 and 19 and 11 4 we just read and then Proverbs uh, 10 and 2 to line that up and it says neither shall their nor neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of Yahuwah's wrath but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy for he shall make even in a speedy riddance of all them that have dwelled in the land and that's also the when he says the vow that's seven nine three and eight i'm gonna get that in a minute talk about go, uh, gold and silver again that's a precept it said yahoo's wrath and that confirms ezekiel seven nineteen. the precept i just went in in ezekiel I'll, i went back to proverbs in solomon's book read two chapters of that confirms ten and two then I went to Ezekiel 1 and 18. So you can see how it line up. And it says, like, I'm going to read it again. It says, Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of Yahuwah's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. Devoured by his fire of his, of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all of them that have dwelled in the land. That's right. The fire of his jealousy. He's a jealous. Uh, he's a jealous power, by the way, the Most High. And if you read the uh, eighth verse in the third chapter in Zephaniah, and it tells about the exhortation to wait to the resurrection of Israel. All right. And I'll read. I always read verses one. Let's talk about. He he's doing judgment to Yahuda, but he's talking about the sinners of Esau, future prophecy that. Uh, gold and silver won't save you but it was talking about us mainly because we were sinning back then and many people have silver and gold back in the day then they just judged us and he judged us with violence he's going to do the same thing with this nation ruling over us now let's read the 8th verse in the chapter 3 in Zephaniah it says therefore wait ye upon me saith Yahuwah until the day that I will I, I rise up to the prey for my determination is gathered the nations valley of Jehoshaphat uh, that I may um, in, in Jehoshaphat, Jeho Jehoshaphat is known as uh, Yahushaphat instead of that that's incorrect they should put that in there that I may assemble to the kingdom to the power upon them upon them my indignation uh, means indignation even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall devour with fire of my jealousy and that's a what we just read in Zephaniah 1 and 18 that just that just explains that he's a jealous um, uh, power and he's gonna do that in the end time and he will do that he did it before he'll do it again that's the most high for you right there and I want to explain further more about man 
You can also read uh, Yeremia, Jeremiah, Yeremia, uh, 17 and 5. I'm going to turn it right quick. Uh, a lot of people don't want to, they always want to trust in man. And it says, the captain and Judah of her army. And then it says, the fifth verse, it says, trusting in a man is a curse. That's right. I'm going to read the fifth, uh, fifth verse of Uremia 17 and 5. And it says, thus saith Yahuwah, cursed be the man that trusteth in a man and make his flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from Yahuwah. And that's right. And you can, I'm going to go to uh, Isaiah, Yezesha, uh, Isaiah uh, 2 and 20. Talk about a man there trusting in man, and this also speaks that in Isaiah. And we'll get that in real quick. And it says, In the day a man shall cast his idols of, of silver and his idols of gold. We just talked about gold and silver in Ezekiel 7 and 19. I forefathers was in iniquity and sin and it says uh in Zephaniah 1 18 and Proverbs 11 and 4 and Proverbs 10 and 2 I just read those scriptures and 3 and 8 talk about the jealousy of his you know to links up with Zephaniah but it says I'm gonna read it again it says just uh 22 and 20 and I'm gonna read down to the 22nd verse and it says in that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold which they they made each one for himself to worship. And that's talking about the Son of God, Jesus Christ. He's silver and gold as well. And they worship idolatry and money. And if you read the, uh, Daniel 11 and 38, they worship the God of forces and silver and gold and rule over many. That's talking about the descendants of Esau, the Edomites, uh, a lot of people call them so-called white men. Well, those people. They uh, worship weaponry to this day. And you got a lot of people. I see a lot of weaponry videos that <clears throat> that pe people that worship Esau's weapons to this day. And, you know, then they said the mouths into the into to the battles. I mean, to to the battles, uh, it will say like that battles. And to go into the clefts of the rocks, talking about uh, Esau again, and to the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of uh, Yahuwah and for the glory of the ma of His Majesty, Majesty when He uh, Azarif to the shaky, uh, tr uh, terrible to the earth. He says to shake the terribly the earth, and then seize ye from a man who his breath is in his nostrils. For where is he to be accounted of? That's talking about trusting in a man. You ain't supposed to believe in his vain philosophies and things like that. And that's, you know, that it's sad that we trust in man more than the most high. We're supposed to trust in the most high and keep the commandments in. Don't worship silver and gold. It ain't going to save you. You can't get out of uh, judgment out of the most high Yahoo's judgment. You can't get out of that. That's a real judgment. And most people try to get out of it. It's, I'm going to read Isaiah 33 and 6 it says and here's what we should be in it says it says uh, it says uh, Yahuwah's judgment against the enemies of the church that's right and here's what we need to do in the 6th verse in uh, Yezeshia Isaiah uh, 33 and 6 and it says and wisdom and knowledge shall be the state of uh, state of ability of thy times and the strength of salvation. The fear of Yahuwah is his treasure. That's right. The fear of Yahuwah is his treasure. So, yeah, I just want to come at come at you with gold and silver will not save you. And stability of times is our treasure. Uh, uh 33 and 6. Uh, Isaiah. So with that. I want to say, may Yahweh bless you many times. All I want to say is shalom.